Hey guys, this is a crypto market update and trading update. I'm gonna be looking at the Bitcoin and Ethereum charts right now. We're at range lows and a lot of people have been asking what is gonna to happen to the price? Is it a good time to get in or should I wait? Is it just gonna go lower? We seem to be testing uh, some support right now. So I'll be looking at that. Also some info and analysis from some key figures in the industry. I wanna have a look at what they're saying as to what's gonna be happening next year. I think it's an important time right now um, and we can analyze all of that. So we'll get into the chart. Firstly, just wanna to touch on my course, give you an update right here. Still working on the content that will be added for free for existing users to come in the new year. So uh, tons of videos are being recorded right now. These will be added for free for everyone already in the course. The price will go up when that new course content is added. So I'll leave that link in the description if you wanna check it out now and get in before that. Um, I've got over 100 videos. Day trading videos and NFT videos are coming as well as many others. We've got some private Discord groups as well if you wanna get involved. Um, so yeah, check that in the description. I just wanna highlight that basically just now, Michael Saylor came out and said he bought some more Bitcoin. So he's bought another almost $100 million worth of Bitcoin. Um, and I tweeted, you gotta love the conviction here. Um, so he owns a, a really sizable chunk of Bitcoin right now. So he's either going to be the best investor of our generation or a complete clown. <laughs> I think probably the uh, previous of those two. Um, so just coming over to Bybit, I'm using Bybit for this one. Bybit actually have a deposit bonus running at the moment. This runs out in a couple of days time. So if you're not uh, on Bybit yet, you can actually set up an account and deposit some crypto on the platform. Bitcoin, USDT, Ethereum, a bunch of other coins as well are supported and get a deposit bonus just for depositing crypto on the platform. Um, so you can get a 3.5% bonus on up to 100,000. It's about 3.5 or 4,000 once you add in all the bonuses. So if you want to take advantage of that, I'll leave the link in the description as well. Coming on to the Bitcoin chart. So actually, I, I quite like this chart. A lot of people are obviously um, kind of looking at the fall from the, the range high right up here, the, the all time high. But actually considering the time of year, no one's trading right now, especially you know institutions are kind of sitting uh, out to the sidelines. They're not really going very heavy into this. But I actually like this chart. And the reason I like this chart is uh, one word, and that is consolidation. This is now uh, a clear consolidation pattern and period for Bitcoin. So when we first came down and we had this huge um, open interest sell-off, right? So everyone got cleared out and then obviously you have the, the kind of buyback. What was happening? And we actually saw kind of uh, lower highs down here. And, and, you know, I was worried, oh, is this pretty much just going to be an awful downtrend? But you can see that we've actually bounced off this support around 45, 46,000, about three or four times now. Um, and this to me now is a clear consolidation pattern. And that usually is quite good considering that, you know, looking at this chart, we are quite clearly still in an uptrend. Like I always say, I have areas of value on the chart. You know, lines are too specific. You can't really tell too much from them. Um, but looking at these areas of value, we have this low and then we have the higher low and then we are still in a higher low with a consolidation. Given that I am bullish, for 2022 because of various different things, including regulation. I like this chart and I think this consolidation is a really healthy chop um, during a time, you know, that not many people are kind of in the market right now because it's Christmas, right? So I think this is good um, and it sets a very strong and solid base of support for Bitcoin around this level of 45. So at the moment, I'm still positive on this price. If we break down through this, I'd be a little bit more worried. Talking about breaking through support and being worried, that's kind of what the Ethereum chart is telling us right now, and it's not the best. I think um, I'm gonna give Ethereum a pass right now because essentially uh, Ethereum has more retail investors as a percentage of its holder base than institutions in comparison to Bitcoin. You can see Bitcoin is just trading absolutely in a consolidation pattern. So there's obviously, you know, um, hedge funds that are just saying, yep, thank you very much. We'll buy the bottom, sell the top and just, you know, take, take this easy money from retail investors who are kind of FOMOing and fudding around. But you can see on the Ethereum side, you know, we, we have actually kind of broken a level here. And again, I've got um, an uptrend of areas of value, a low, a lower high, and sorry, a higher low and even a higher low. And we have a consolidation, but you can just see that Ethereum has kind of broken through a quite kind of key level right here. So not the most uh, bullish. And, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see how this plays out over the next few days coming into January. Um, but certainly we would like to see the price today finish above this kind of level um, to keep a consolidation here. Um, 
you know, like I say, a small breakout of a trend line isn't a major deal, but certainly uh, this isn't great um, breaking this level of support here for Ethereum, but Ethereum can move much quicker and faster than Bitcoin as well. So still generally a good chart overall. Open interest is also really important to look at when trying to predict a price. And actually it's kind of 50-50 right now. Um, so on Bybit and FTX, Binance and FTX, sorry, you've got a little bit of short interest here um, in comparisons to longs. And then Bybit and Bitfinex um, kind of going long at this level. Um, and we've got DYDX as well, also going long. So a lot of Asian traders use DYDX, including Chinese traders, um, which is where a lot of the selling has been coming from. Um, so maybe a pretty good sign. Also, you know, the, the, one of the reasons for the volatility recently in the last few days has been uh, futures contracts expiring. So uh, not perpetual contracts, obviously, because um, they are perpetual. But if we look at December 2021, we've actually got a, a futures expiry. And this is always um, a precursor of some sort of volatility. So um, we've actually got the expiry right here, which is happening pretty much today. So what usually happens in the days leading up to is that you do have volatility as traders kind of uh, net off their positions, uh, make sure they're in the position that they want to be in. So I wouldn't read too much into a little bit of volatility from 47 up to kind of 49. Uh, but if we look at June 2022 and March 2022, you can see uh, essentially uh, March 2022 futures are trading higher than the December 2021 futures. Um, you can see this right here. So the March 2022 Bitcoin futures are, are trading, you know, the price is above. We don't have to uh, read too much into the price, but obviously traders are kind of net positive for the Bitcoin price over the next quarter because the futures price for March 2022 is above the current uh, futures price. So generally that is uh, traders saying that they are generally positive. This can obviously change depending on news and events and everything. But for right now, um, it kind of gives me more confidence about the support at this level around 47. Things can change, of course, but traders right now are currently fairly positive overall about the next quarter. One of the things I'm slightly worried about short term is the difference between retail traders and institutional traders coming into the market. And it really shows by some of these charts I'm going to show you. Uh, retail traders seem to not really be into the market right now. They kind of made their bets back in March this year. So it looks like institutions are going to be running things. I prefer this because institutions are more reliable than the retail trade who flip in and out of things, uh, come in and out on FOMO and FUD, and they have no long-term plan usually. So it's not very predictable, but we're going to see this from Raul. And obviously you know, he's massive in the industry, so I'm sure you follow him already. Um, but he's saying that BTC volumes have been stagnant um, since that huge run up in 2020. This is kind of retail volumes. Active wallet addresses have not gone anywhere either. This is telling me that essentially the, the kind of retail... Uh, you know, investors coming in and maybe fundamental user growth has maybe slowed a little bit after a huge growth um, at the start of this year. And that can obviously um, affect prices and uptake of the technology in general. Really talking about Bitcoin here, but it affects the whole market. So you can see basically the sell off from the retail trade or the lack of interest from the retail trade has been replaced by institutions here measured by wallets with over 10 million dollars so really that tells us everything we need to know that institutions are getting in that's good for me it means that the price of bitcoin will more accurately reflect reflect its fundamental value rather than pure speculation which really is what the retail trade does it speculates um, and obviously, you know, things are much more wild in that sense. I prefer institutional trade coming in because it kind of plays out more with the market. It's way more boring, but it also serves for a healthier market in general over the long term. So um, if we go down here, you can say if, Met if Metcalf's law applies, then network growth is currently very slow, hence why the price is sluggish. So, you know, these things come in fits and starts. Obviously, 2020, when everyone was locked down, there was a, a huge growth. And these things, you know, don't go up in a straight line. If you zoom out, it is pretty much a straight line. But there are going to be times in the year where people just aren't adopting it as fast, um, you know, as other times. Um, so you can see active addresses, you know, people have rotated into different opportunities. So um, what I would suggest here, you know, if you're a long term investor, obviously just keep in the biggest projects. But certainly that free money that we had in 2020, that is coming to an end. 
Okay, so in 2021, we know interest rates are going up and we know the Fed is buying fewer assets, right? It's just tapering that. And so you have to understand that that kind of uh, huge explosion in crypto where you had meme coins going up thousands of percent, this is coming to an end and, and pretty much is at an end now. So you have to choose the right projects that are actually going to grow because the free money premium is no more. And so those types of assets are going to be completely um, underperforming, even going down comparison to the market. It is now all about, unfortunately, a very boring market where only true fundamental growth user adoption will actually win out over the long term. Just to prove this even more, have a look at these charts as well from Will Clemente. You can go and follow him on Twitter. I'm sure you do already. Uh, massive account, a lot of on-chain analysis. He is saying the same thing. Retail interest in Bitcoin has gone. Okay, so the big boys are running the show in Bitcoin. Again, this isn't terrible. Um, I actually like this because it's more predictable. You can see if I take myself out the way that essentially the total transaction fees on the market is absolutely gone to insignificance, right? So the retail trade, people using uh, Bitcoin and getting into the market for the first time, definitely at a massive low in comparison to where it was earlier in the year. Transfer volume is also down. Um, it's all down. So transfer volume by size, uh, again, down. So it means that really, you know, the biggest institutions are in play right now. Total transfer volume breakdown by size, entity adjusted. The, um, the 10 million plus volume, as you can see here, this is who is playing. So the institutions really are running things right now. I don't have a, a massive issue with this. Um, I like that. So really what this means for 2022 is really two things. Firstly, Bitcoin is now a large enough asset that it's going to trade along with the economy in general. Um, much more like a store of value asset like gold, which um, obviously has ebbs and flows with the market. Bitcoin will also have this. Bitcoin isn't a moon boy co coin that's just going to suddenly go up kind of 50, 100 percent. It is going to um, obviously trade a lot slower with the market in general. I'm fine with this overall. Um, but obviously what's going to happen, I think, is obviously Web3 and that's where retail investors will be getting in. Before it was Bitcoin where people got in first. Now it's going to be Web3 stuff like NFTs and gaming and everything like that. That is where the retail is going to be. So a lot of this on-chain stuff, as you can see here, this is in relation to Bitcoin. These Bitcoin analysts now have to realize that if they want to keep analyzing Bitcoin, it's going to be an institutional story that they will have to do. If they actually want to um, get in with the retail and actual people that want to use this technology, it's going to be NFTs, it's going to be gaming, it's going to be all of the apps that we haven't even seen now, you know, applications that let you move around different assets and community tokens. I think these are all coming. Um, these are obviously way more high risk to invest in, but this is where the big rewards are going to be. That's how I see things at the moment. The market is maturing and, you know, we're seeing the largest assets mature and more institutions getting in means the prices will be slightly more predictable and more boring. That's not a bad thing uh, for sure. Um, we're just going to see a lot of shop and trade and there's going to be so much opportunity in all of the different applications that will come on Ethereum um, and all of the other smart contracts chains. So if you do want to get a deposit bonus on Bybit, you can just put some crypto on there and get up to around a $4,000 bonus just for depositing crypto on the platform. I'll leave that link in the description. If you also want to check out the course, like I said, I'm adding a ton of new videos in the new year. The price is going up at that time. I'm also adding trade alerts and regular portfolio updates. They will be um, posted in the private Discord groups that course members have access to, of course. Check it out uh, via the link in the description if you want to have a look at that. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.